Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today we're going to be looking at graphs and functions. So if you're not familiar with either of these topics, it's okay because I'm going to explain this in a very easy to understand way. So let's go ahead and kick it off with what is a graph? So a graph is basically just a picture like I've drawn here for you. You've got these two lines, you've got a vertical over here on the left and you've got a horizontal down here. These are called axes. They both have numbers on them and these dots in the uh, middle are your data or your information that you plug in. It's basically a pictorial view of what you can put in a table. It's just an easy to reference sort of chart and these dotted lines just help you to visualize which dot goes with what number. So like I said, this is the y-axis which is sometimes called the dependent axis, which is also sometimes called your, your output. So what does that mean? That means that this axis, all the values that you see here, depend on what value you're looking at on the horizontal. That's why this x-axis or the horizontal axis sometimes called independent values or sometimes also called your, your, uh, your inputs, they uh, define or rather they determine what the value over here is gonna be. So like if I look here at zero, if I have a value of zero, the result or my output will be $10. If I skip over to five, my result on the y-axis, my dependent axis will be $20. So that just kind of made up this data. So this is called the Cartesian coordinate system. So that means each one of these points has coordinates and you spell that like this C O O R D coordinates and they're designated like this X comma Y so if you look at the first point that's at X equals 0 and Y equals 10 so that's the point 0 comma 10 this point right here this is X equals 1 because that's the X value of 1 and you scroll over to the left, that's x is 1, y is 12. Or you can say input is 1, output is 12. And it goes on and on, so you can do that for each point. So this would be 5, 20. x is 5, y is 20. I didn't, I probably should have drawn the dotted line, but that goes to that point. This one goes to that, to there, to there, to there. So you also have these terms called intercepts. Um, this right here is the y-intercept. The y, any intercept is basically the point on the, the, the axis that you're talking about where it crosses it. So you see how the graph, the line, it intersects this point right here? That's why they call this the y-intercept. It's the same place where x equals zero. Wherever x equals zero, that's gonna be your y-intercept, wherever the line crosses the y-axis. Conversely, your x-intercept, if we kept on drawing this line, it would continue out back here, but I didn't draw it. But uh, the x-intercept is wherever the y-value is zero. So it's whatever x-value the, uh, the graph touches the x-axis at, which is basically where the x-value equals, sorry, where the y-value equals zero. Just to give you a little background. So we looked at the graph. We established x-axis and y-axis. We looked at what coordinates are. This is the Cartesian system. The point right here where the uh, two axes meet, that's called the origin, and it's x is zero, y is zero. Now let's go ahead and let's look at an example of a function. We're actually gonna look at what a function is, and specifically what this function is. So I'm gonna be referring back to this graph here that I just made. So let's look at functions. So let's, let's make up an example. Let's pretend that my best friend is having a party and he says, hey, it cost you 10 bucks just to get into the party. So let's write that down. $10 to get in. To get in the party. And then he says, hey, if you want to have drinks at the party, it's gonna be an extra two bucks per drink. So let's see, it's $2 per drink. 
per drink at the party. So we can make a function out of this. Remember, a function is something that will return a value when you put a value inside of it. It's kind of like a machine. The function is actually going to, you're going to see in a second, is basically the same thing as the y-axis. You could say that in this example that the y-axis is a function of the x-axis because it depends on the value you're looking at here. So you'll see that in just a second. So let, let's, let's model this. So it's 10 bucks to get in the party. It's two bucks for every drink that you want to have. So a function will basically tell us how much the total cost of the party will be at different drink rates. So if you don't have anything to drink, it'll be a certain price. If you have four drinks, it'll be a different price, right? It's a function of how many drinks you have. So let, let, let's write this. So total, total cost. That's how much we're going to spend. What is that equal to? Well, it costs $10 just to get in the dang party, right? $10 to get in plus $2. That's a two. $2 multiplied by the number of drinks that we decide to drink, right? Because if I had zero drinks, that would be $2 times zero that would be gone and we'd just be left with $10. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend any extra than, except for the cover charge to get in my friend's party. So we can make a, a, a quick table of values he, uh, here and you'll see it's already plotted. That's what I plotted on the other page. So let's see, number of drinks and total cost. So the number of drinks, I don't have room here. This is, this is gonna be like our, our x-axis right here. And the total cost, this is gonna be like our y-axis. So the total cost depends on the number of drinks that we have. So another way that we could have written this you could have said, okay, total cost equals $10 plus two bucks times the number of drinks. Well, uh, remember total cost we said is like the Y axis. So you could have said Y equals $10 plus two X because Y is the output and X is the input. They're just letters to make it easier because in real life, this is what's going on up here. This letter business is just to make this simpler. Y is always designated as the, the output, what you're gonna get as your result. The X is always gonna be your input, what you put in. So we're gonna put in different drink numbers for the X value so that we can spit out or get the result or the output of total cost. Just wanted to make sure that we uh, understood that before moving forward. So let's see, okay, number of drinks. Let's make up some stuff. So let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five. So what's the total cost? If we have zero drinks here, this is obviously gonna be $10. Why is that? That's because we know that the total cost is equal to 10 plus two times zero, right? Two times zero, this is, this is a zero. So the result is 10, right? So let's say we had one drink, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be $12, right? Because if we look at the equation here, this function, it's gonna be 10 plus two multiplied by one. Two times one is two, plus 10 is 12. So you get the idea, if we do this for each point, and we'll have 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20. So if you don't spend anything, you're, if you don't have any drinks, you're gonna spend 10 bucks, which is just the cover charge to get in. If you have five drinks, you will have spent $20. So looking at the graph, we just represented that. See zero, sorry, you can't see that. Zero, our input, if we input zero drinks, so let me, let me also write that down, I'm sorry. This is the number of drinks number of drinks and over here this is the uh, total 
total cost, and that's in dollars, of the party. So see, it's a nice way to kind of reference what our total cost is going to be. It kind of computes it for us. You know, you just look at the graph and you just reference over and it's just a lot quicker. So that's what a function is. Just kind of recap. So we said the total cost was 10 plus 2 times the number of drinks. We're saying that's the same thing as y equals 10 plus 2x. Just FYI, if you didn't know, whenever you write a number next to a letter, you're assuming it's being multiplied. Because, I mean, you could write 2 times x, but you see how that can be confusing. Or you could write 2 dot x, or you could put, you know, 2 times x with parentheses. But the standard convention is just putting it like this, just the 2x. Just wanted to point that out. So you've got y equals 10 plus 2x. y, like we said, this is our output or the, the dependent result, right? It depends on what that thing is. That's why this is our input. So you've got an input and an output. Sometimes now, you'll see this written, I gotta use another page, I'm sorry. We said y equals 10 plus 2x. Sometimes you'll see it written like this. You'll see it written as f parentheses x equals 10 plus 2x. So f of x equals 10 plus 2x. What's going on here? So f of x is the same thing as y. It's just a fancy way of saying it. So this is the same as y. Same thing as y. It's almost like why do they have to write it like that? It's just a confusing thing. So this just basically says that f... It, this is a function of x. So f is kind of like the word function and in parentheses, anything inside the parentheses you can think of it as function of x. So the parentheses is kind of like the word of. So anything that you, like, like okay, this is f of x equals 10 plus 2x. They could have asked you, well, what is, what's f of three? f of three equals question mark. That could be a question they ask you on your homework assignment. What does that mean? They're basically saying, hey, if you input a three, this three, if you put that into the x in this equation, what will the result be? What's the y value gonna be? So f of three, this would equal 10 plus two times the input. The input is three, right? So 10 plus two times three, this equals 10 plus six, which equals 16. That would be our, our answer. So that's just another way they can write it. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense if you're new with functions and graphs. We looked at what the graphs are, what functions are, different ways that you see them in school. So um, hopefully this helps. Um, Y'all have a good day.